Welcome into K State Online. I am Mason Voth, joined by Derek Young as we get set to talk about the latest addition to the K State football roster. Also, some happenings uh, around the program on guys that have left in the transfer portal. But we'll start with the good. K State has added their second commitment. From the transfer portal, they get themselves some help on the defensive side of the ball at a position where they have lost a couple of guys uh, in the offseason already. Now, they did get the news that one uh, pretty significant piece would be back next season in Brendan Mott, but you did lose Khalid Duke and Nate Matlack at defensive end, as well as Cody Stuffelbean, who's not going to return. And so the Wildcats went out and they added Travis Bates, a defensive end from Austin P. So let's go P. Uh, what does this mean for K-State to add Bates, who, I mean, was a a top 15 defensive lineman in the portal, had other Power 5 offers, Power 4 offers uh, from, you know, Houston and Boston College, but Wisconsin's a significant one on there as Luke Fickle's heading into year two. So he's about to start making this really his own thing. Uh, and you get a pretty productive young player with three years of eligibility left. Yeah, I think that's a big thing. You get a guy that has three years left, a guy that was very productive for a redshirt freshman, you got the stats up there if you're watching on YouTube. Some will say, well, it's only three sacks and 32 tackles. He had some of the most pressures in all of FCS football uh, as well. So, you know, that probably doesn't – the three sacks probably doesn't tell the entire story. And obviously there was more than one Power 5 program that thought that this kid was going to, you know, be a heck of a football player um, in terms of when they were seen as full potential in a finished product. Um, yeah. Look, you'll take that. I mean, and and it, it's a good fit too because you're talking about a bigger defensive end that you probably need in your obby in front when you play the three three five. A guy that was really productive as a redshirt freshman, his best football is probably still ahead of him. He's probably only going to get better when he's around better football players as well. Put him in a college strength weight conditioning program under Coach True starting in January, and and you might say, man, this. Now, I don't know if I would say sky's the limit, but this guy's got a lot of upside where even if you look, like I hate to do this, and I'm not trying to take a shot at the young man, but it's going to sound like it. You look at just about every service that does these screens for portal rankings, and again, I take them with a grain of salt because sometimes they're trying to evaluate a kid that's never played college football yet. But you look at where Travis Bates is ranked, and you look where Nate Matlack is ranked, and there's a clear argument that Kansas State upgrade. Yeah, look, you know, and another service that isn't necessarily uh, the gospel of PFF, but like Travis Bates was a was a well thought of defender on his Austin P team as a a guy that was a freshman, and you think what you bring in and how he was being sought after. Uh, this feels like a really good pickup for K State at a position of need that is going to give them an opportunity, and you throw into the mix too that K State has other guys on this roster that are young or unproven that seem primed to get more opportunities next year. This, this feels like the defensive end situation isn't going to be as dire as maybe people thought even a week ago by looking at the roster now. And I think Travis Bates plays a pretty significant role in that. Yeah. I mean, he's one, he was probably near the top of the board in terms of guys that you really feel like you had to have. And like you said, it kind of shores up this defensive line a lot more now, um, now that he is in the fold, you feel a lot better about it. Because remember a week ago, Travis Bates was not in the fold, and we were thinking Brendan Mott was leaving. It's like you got yeah. zero. Now you got zero DNs. You're going to be counting on Chidi Obiizer, and you're going to count on Jordan Allen, two guys they really love. But it's like we're going to need a little bit more than those two. Now you go to keep Brendan Mott. You're going to go get Travis Bates, who's uh, another good young player in the program, and we'll see how that fits and and where he he kind of positions himself. Um, come spring football, and, and then you hope, you know, the I guess the cherry on the Sunday is Malcolm Alcorn Crowder that they're still trying to pursue and going up what, against Florida, mm-hmm. going up against Cincinnati, Syracuse. I mean, if Malcolm Alcorn Crowder signs early, I think I like where Kent State stands. If he signs late, then you gotta, you're got you probably inviting some competition from the SEC. Yeah. No, I would agree with that, and, and we'll see kind of what comes about there. And K-State obviously still going to be – active in the portal and trying to add more and more guys to make them better. Uh, In addition to everybody that's going to come in as a part of this high school class for signing day, that's coming up later this week in terms of guys that have left the program and what is next for them. 
Uh, we have some more destinations that are known and kind of an idea of where some other guys might ultimately make their destination. Um, probably one of the most notables that is known now is Nate Matlick, Matlack heading to Pitt, but we also know that Will Howard to USC uh, seems like a likely uh, solution to his portal problem. Uh, what do you make of both of the, the new or assumed new landing spots for both of these players? Yeah, you go back to he says Trayshawn Ward, Boston College, and and you think about that, it's probably a good fit where he knows he's probably going to get a lot more touches than he did at Kansas State. Um, another one not up there yet, um, and this is before I get to the two you're asking about, is Kobe Savage, which it sounds like Oregon is the perceived favorite or destination there, and then you added Will Howard, USC, name Matlack, Pittsburgh, name Matlack's probably getting that four-man front that he wanted, so um, we'll see what he can do in the ACC in a scheme that he thinks fits him better than the one at Kansas State. I'm, we'll see what the coaching's like. Uh, Alate the kid, Kansas City kid, K State. You know, Lake is and uh, his parents both graduated from K State, so you still hope the best for him. Of course, Kobe Savage. Look, I, I'm not going to root. I'm not rooting against him either. But from my vantage point and and angle here, usually you see Oregon with players with a little bit more of a profile and speed. So, uh, you know, I think he'll he'll have a tall task in front of him to gain meaningful playing time, to be quite honest. I'm um, not saying that he can't, but I think it's going to be a challenge for him if Oregon is his likely landing spot. Will Howard, they're probably clearing the deck for him that he is the guy at USC. And he is, <laughs> and I agree with a lot of people, the way that they've They've described him and evaluated him. He's much better as the facilitator in the field general where it's like, oh, here's a really talented player. Here's the ball. Here's a talented player. Here's the ball. I I just get a kind of dink and dunk to these guys that can turn five-yard plays into 80-yard plays. That's what I have with Deuce Vaughn, right? That's what I have with Malik Knowles. That's what I probably felt like I didn't necessarily have this year. Is that a better situation for him? It probably is, but he's getting, you know, his – something that's always worked against them. So he always wants to do something more, right? And that's not a knock against them, but that's where he gets into trouble is when he tries to do too much. And you see the interceptions or the should be interceptions, which, you know, for being transparent, he dodged quite a few of those this year. Mm -hmm. But USC wants him for a reason. Lincoln Riley's a heck of an offensive mind, heck of a quarterback coach. So I assume Will is going to have success there. We'll see how much success, obviously, Many in, in getting the state land will be rooting for him as well. And and I think I wanted to say another one. Oh, I mentioned Trayshawn Ward. Good fit. You'll get a lot more touches at Boston College. Yeah, I I think that is a a good spot for him to end up. I, I mean, you never know what could happen there. And obviously the ACC is going to be pretty large next year. But like I could see a, a realm where Trayshawn Ward is like an all ACC player next year because he's going to get the usage and the opportunity at Boston College. And Boston College may not be, you know, some world beating team, but I think that the the opportunity to put up numbers will be there for Trayshawn Ward. And I do think talent wise, he's capable of doing it. And Willie could be really good at Texas A and M. He's got the talent and the size and the measurables and the, he's the prototype. Like people say, Oh, what's he going to do there? Like, well, he's good enough. He can go start at Texas A&M. Like mm-hmm. he's that good. As long as he has his head on his shoulders, he's locked in and he's engaged. He could really put himself on a grand stage in the sec and propel himself to a professional career. Um, whether that happens or not, it's probably more dependent upon him between the ears than anything. Yeah. We'll see uh, kind of how it ends up. And, I'm also with you. I look. I, I think Will Howard at USC uh, is is actually a really good fit for Will in terms of like what you were saying. Like you're going to have weapons more similar to what you had in 2022 there uh, as opposed to 2023. And Lincoln Riley obviously knows how to coach quarterbacks and have dynamic offenses. It's just going to be a matter of can can Will avoid being tempted to to bite the big play apple. Uh, in that USC offense because that can get him into trouble at times. And while, yes, you're going to have more guys that can make that big play for you at USC, you're also going to have more opportunities where you think you can make that play happen at USC and you might get burnt a little bit more. So it'll be interesting to see. And uh, 
I'm already looking forward to to watching Will Howard in the Big Ten at USC next year. And also, uh, USC's first game of 2024, standalone Sunday night, Labor Day weekend against LSU in Las Vegas. So uh, it's going to be being thrown to the wolves in Will Howard's presumed first start at USC. I'll watch. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, I'll be watching and not just because there's nothing else on TV. Uh, and hopefully everybody's sitting there uh, enjoying Avery Johnson's six touchdown performance against, you know, whatever FCS opponent is in town. To start. Uh, by the way, I, I, one, one, never mind me, one joke I wanted to make, and not that they're playing Austin P, but I know that they'll open up. Who does Kansas State open up with? Uh, that's the thing. I can't remember uh, who it is next year. I can pull it up. Rather quickly, well, uh, have, to, I know they have Tulane, Tulane in Arizona, but aside yeah. From that, um, uh, next season it will be UT Martin on August thirty first. Oh, yeah, there you go. I was hoping it was Illinois State. Now that they have Jake Rubley and uh, oh Xavier. man, yeah, that's it's a real chance to play Illinois State. I'm going to be watching some Redbirds next year. You bet it. Um, uh, well, real quick, a little K State trivia for you. Do you know? Uh, who coached their first ever game at K-State against Illinois State. Was that Bill Snyder? I don't know. It was Ron Prince. <laughs> I, I was there. Uh, it was, boy, that was a, the start to a, a rough stretch. That was, They unveiled the naming of the stadium and everything, and oh. then some ugly game against Illinois State played out. Oh, that sounds about right. The, the joke I wanted to make was uh, Travis Bates, obviously, plays for Austin P. They are the governors. Mm -hmm. So uh, he saw the governor's cup trophy. I was like, oh. this is it. This is, he's, he's a governor kind of guy. Yeah. Well, maybe instead of Laura Kelly next year, he'll be the one handing it to the cats. They'll just there be like, go. all right, our resident governor, get up here, hand the trophy over. So uh, yes, that, that's a, that's a good little nugget to point out there about the governors and uh, Travis. That's how Bates. They, sold them. they just showed him the trophy. Yeah. And he's like, well, uh, good enough for me. So. All right, well, that will do it for uh, this edition of going over kind of the uh, transfer portal and everything else. Starting to be a little kinder to K-State, and we're starting to get an idea of where some guys leaving the program might be headed. Sky certainly is not falling, and K-State is doing a pretty good job. Are you trying to catch a ball receivers. or something? Or Yeah, we need some receivers now. Yeah, yeah that's because true. Because we're starting to shore up the line, so now it's receiver time. Yep, yep. Receivers would be helpful uh, to, to give more weapons to Avery Johnson moving forward. And uh, if you're curious on who might be the receivers that K-State ends up with or when they do get them, best spot for you to keep track of all that is K-State Online. So head over to On3, get signed up. There's a special signing day sale going on right now, so you can get your first year for a discounted price if you want to become a member at K-State Online. And if you're already a member, uh, we appreciate you being over there, and you also probably appreciate being in the know constantly about what's going on with the Wildcats, both in, on football and basketball stuff. So uh, stay locked in. We have plenty more coming throughout the week in regards to football. we got to keep prepping for the Pop-Tarts Bowl. We'll have full signing day coverage when it comes about. Drew and I are going to do a pretty long show going over some of the superlatives from the class and uh, some of the individual players that really stick out in it and just the overall philosophy for this class for K-State because it's a little bit different in terms of size, but the Wildcats still trying to add to it from the JUCO ranks and maybe even the high school ranks. We'll see. So that will do it for Derek Young. I am Mason Vo. Thanks for watching K-State Online.